used these chemical weapons, if any, two weeks ago is an important question. But whether or not to put the U.S. military into yet another war is the question at hand, and they are two different and distinct questions. U.S. missile strikes would make Syrians and us and the world worse off, regardless of who did what two weeks ago. Attacking Iraq 10 years ago would have been immoral, illegal, and disastrous, even if all the stories had been true about all the weapons in Iraq. The case made by the White House has not been proven. Some find it plausible. Others are convinced by reports that the rebels were responsible. Many feel very, very passionately about one of these views or the other. But we should not, I think, fall into the trap of supposing that the resolution of that question determines the justness of launching an attack on Syria. If evidence confirms chemical weapons use by both sides, then bombing both sides would send one and only one message, namely that the United States government has gone insane. President Obama and Secretary Kerry talk about upholding the Chemical Weapons Convention. But in fact, the convention requires that violations be prosecuted in international court. It says not one word about bombing countries, which is itself a violation of the UN Charter and of the Kellogg-Briand Pact. Will Assad voluntarily show up at The Hague to be prosecuted? Probably not. But neither will he dive in front of a Tomahawk missile. And the stated policy of Secretary Kerry is to avoid him while sending a message. Well, an indictment sends a message, too, without killing anybody in the process. The proposed law enforcement is actually a law violation and will be regardless of what Congress does. If both houses of Congress approve missile strikes and or a wider war, that action will remain a crime under the UN Charter and under the Kellogg-Briand Pact. So you violate two treaties in order to bomb a country in the name of another treaty that in no way, shape, or form sanctions bombing countries. And you do it in the name of the international community with the nations of the world against you. This is the plan. But if the House of Representatives votes no, or is denied an opportunity to vote because the Speaker of the House sees that the votes are against him, and then the President orders an attack anyway, that will be an unconstitutional abuse of power and an impeachable offense. The White House believes the House of Representatives is afraid to vote no, afraid to look bad if the war goes ahead anyway, and afraid to hold the President accountable. If denied a vote, Congress members should use a discharge petition to force one. US, the U.S. could discourage the use of chemical weapons by ceasing to store and use chemical weapons, as it did in Iraq, as well as depleted uranium and cluster bombs. The U.S. government could encourage the use of international law by complying with it, by joining the International Criminal Court, by working to refer alleged criminals to the International Criminal Court. The U.S. could work to reduce deaths around the world by ceasing to arm the world, including brutal governments in Saudi Arabia, and Bahrain, and Egypt, and Yemen, and Israel, etc., or by devoting a fraction of what it spends on the military on actual human aid, which is something Syrians actually need right now. Millions of refugees have fled and are fleeing at a higher rate under the current U.S. threat, the threat itself, of course, being a violation of the U.N. Charter. Attacking Syria will kill men, women, and children, like the 100,000 killed by both sides before this 200 or 300 or 1400, depending who you listen to. They will suffer and die, like the thousands recently killed in Egypt without U.S. bombs resulting. They will die or remain injured or traumatized, like the many thousands who die from all kinds of weapons in civil wars the U.S. stays out of. They will be killed for no good reason. And then the violence will escalate. If Assad really was crazy enough to use chemical weapons and provoke an attack less than 10 miles from the UN inspectors on the day they arrived, why would Tomahawk missiles deter him? Secretary Kerry talks about degrading Assad's chemical capabilities, which means risking huge casualties if chemical stockpiles are hit. In any event, both sides are very likely to escalate violence following missile strikes, not scale it back. And the White House and the Pentagon know it and are planning for it. 
On Monday of this week, many of us were warning that this so-called limited war, or a war that's not really a war, as John Kerry puts it, could expand beyond anyone's control. By Tuesday, yesterday, the White House was already expanding it, pushing for an open-ended resolution, refusing to forbid U.S. troops on the ground, telling members of Congress that the rebels would be helped and Assad's government hurt. Remember, the U.N. authorized a rescue in Benghazi, and the White House and NATO used it to launch a war on Libya and overthrow its government. If Congress authorizes a so-called punitive message into Syria, who knows what it will be used for. If Iran or Russia retaliates, looking quickly for another planet to live on might not be such a bad idea. The CIA has been working with the rebels. The more the U.S. government takes up their side, the more the U.S. will be blamed for their vicious crimes. Secretary Kerry claims they will create a secular democracy. Experts on Syria claim he's misinformed. Many Syrians on both sides oppose U.S. intervention. Many Syrians oppose the rebels. A stable government is very unlikely to come out of a violent victory, and the rebels include many who have no interest in democracy or human rights. They won't even produce a US-friendly, brutal government. They will produce a government that may hate Iran, but will hate Washington too, as well as probably women and Kurds and Christians and all sorts of groups. The U.S. is going to be marking September 11th by joining in a war on the side of Al-Qaeda. Now, while I am thrilled to have war opposition from Americans who believe Iraqis are ungrateful, the reality is that the U.S. military destroyed Iraq. Iraq and Libya and Afghanistan are horrible places to try to live. Doing that to Syria at great financial and human cost is not our only option. Catholic, uh, Chaldean Catholic Bishop Antoine Audo of Aleppo, Syria, said recently, who opposes U.S. missile strikes, said, quote, we heard a lot about democracy and freedom from the U.S. in Iraq, and we see now the results, how the country came to be destroyed. President Obama's draft resolution for Congress states that the missile strikes will resolve nothing and that only a peace negotiation will resolve anything but missile strikes will hurt that process. The nations arming both sides should be pressured to insist on a ceasefire. The arms should stop flowing. All parties should sit down in Geneva or somewhere else and talk. Why sabotage what everyone admits is the only real course to peace? While we don't have polls of Syrians, we do have them here. We in the United States have a clear majority opposed to attacking Syria, arming Syrians, or otherwise taking part in this war. We have a majority in favor of aid and diplomacy. We have more Democrats than Republicans at the moment eager to ignore public opinion. The Democratic delegate to Congress from Washington, D.C. has openly said that she would only vote for what she considers a disastrous idea out of loyalty to President Obama. Now, Congressman Goode and Congressman Perriello voted for every war dollar they could get their hands on. But neither of them was doing it for a president of the other party. And neither was doing so with public opinion this strongly against a war this early. And neither was doing so after the disastrous experiences of Afghanistan and Iraq and Libya and Pakistan and Yemen and Somalia. Neither was doing so with our finances and our civil liberties and our natural environment and our grasp on representative <coughs> government this far gone down the slope of militarism. The US government has a credibility problem not when it threatens war. Everyone knows its in inclination to drop bombs and ask questions later. It lacks credibility when it claims to support democracy and the rule of law. We took a small group to Congressman Hurt's office last week, and we have yet to hear a response on whether he'll oppose another war. If Scott can't let us know this evening, it may be that we need to take a larger group to Congressman Hurt's office tomorrow. In any case, everyone should phone and email and fax Congressman Hurt their opinions tonight and in the morning and the next day. Also, there is a rally at the White House at noon on Saturday and events in D.C. from then until the vote, uh, which you can find at warisacrime.org and many other websites.